a man's best friend, you'll never convince me or half the world otherwise. But other than dogs, and let's put cats aside because that's a very divisive subject, I think something that we can all agree on is that cattle are humanity's best friend. And domesticated cattle have been our friends for centuries, for millennia. Whether it's meat or milk and dairy or leather, it's the cows that have helped civilization grow. In fact, the Latin word for cow, pecus, is rooted in pecuniary or impecunious. If you don't have cattle, you don't have wealth. So tied to our civilization is the humble cow. Who hates cows? No one I would trust. In fact, the country of India rather reveres cattle. And imagine my shock when I see the news out of Ireland that they are planning to cull, to kill, to euthanize hundreds of thousands of cattle for no reason other than cattle emit greenhouse gases. By that, when they chew and digest the grass they eat, they burp and release some methane. And apparently, killing hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of cattle in Ireland, which isn't even a speck in the world's emanations of greenhouse gases. Apparently that is the moral outcome, so much so that their government seems dead set on enacting it. Well, if it's an idea in Ireland, you better believe it's an idea elsewhere. Joining us now to talk about this insanity is our friend Mark Morano, the boss of ClimateDepot.com. Mark, great to see you. Of course they're doing this in the name of the climate, aren't they? Yes, I mean, and it's not just the culling of cows. We're seeing it going after high yield agriculture. We're seeing it go after particularly the climate compliance regulations going after the small time farmers. But we just saw last week France beginning their climate lockdowns, banning short haul flights. At the same time, we're seeing Germany talking about massive meat restrictions down to one sausage a month. I mean, this is since January, the acceleration of this agenda for us, the unwashed masses, uh, has nothing I've ever seen. It's almost as if they think their time is limited and they're rushing all of this through, almost all of it, without any vote of democracy. They're going after collapse of energy, food, transportation, and yes, free speech as well. If you dare to complain, it's immediate misinformation. Uh, but, the, but the animal thing goes back to the uh, net zero commitments. This has been on the table for decades. I was working in the U.S. Senate Environment and Public Works Committee. 2007, I believe, they had the report about how cow emissions were more damaging to the planet than the entire transportation sector, planes, trains, automobiles. So for decades, They've had cows in their sights, and guess what? 2023 is the year they're doing something about it. It's crazy to me, and you're right. I mean, we covered, to the best that we could, the Dutch farmer rebellion. Yes. And I just couldn't understand it. Like, why would... Going after energy is insane. Energy poverty, they want to jack up the price of energy. They want to get us off cheap, plentiful, clean energy and onto unreliable, climate-friendly energy that's not friendly to energy. Like, that it seems like madness to me. But to go after food, to go after the Dutch farmers, I didn't know that Holland was the second largest food exporter in the world. You wouldn't think it for a rather small country. I, the madness of it. And that came to Canada, the war on nitrogen. Like they're seriously yeah. going through the periodic table, the war on carbon against <laughs> energy, the war on nitrogen for fertilizer. But you, I saw on your website that story that you'll only be able to have one sausage a month if you're a good boy. And, I, and of course, the story that France is banning short flights, it really is all of the same master plan and you dare call it a conspiracy theory they'll call you a nut it's not a conspiracy theory it's actually happening it's a conspiracy fact yes that's what's so shocking this is the quiet parts out loud this was by the way the german build the the uh the daily newspaper literally on their a huge article only one sausage per month for everyone the german nutrition society i'm sure steeped in the whole climate agenda corporate wokeness and uh, the whole net zero agenda is now recommending over a 90% reduction in daily meat eating. And by the way, when these unelected boards recommend something, usually it's bureaucrats that are fast to impose this 
on every single society. And it's the same thing we saw during COVID. If it's a recommendation by Lord Fauci or a public health official, then by golly, it's the law. And there's never a vote on it either. It's just sort of imposed. And what they're doing in Germany is what they're doing in France. And what they're doing in France and Germany is what they're doing in the Netherlands, is what they're doing in, they, what they did in Sri Lanka, what they're doing in Australia. I talked to an activist there. They're decimating Australian farming. They're doing the same thing now in the United States. John Kerry announced last week, our U.S. climate envoy announced that they were going to be coming after agriculture, that agriculture had to be part of the climate. He doesn't even call it change it, climate change. He calls it the climate crisis. So... What this means, and we're seeing it now, EPA, Al Gore's group is pushing these methane restrictions. They're going after animal agriculture, period. Bill Gates' stated goal in being America's single largest farmland owner is to make us all eat what he calls synthetic meat. Oh now, depending on how you want to define it, that's the vegetable oil process things. It's also Bill Gates and Richard Branson have invested billions in this lab-grown meat that's grown in a steel vat in oh a laboratory God, so from the gross. stem cells and then additives, and then get this as printed on a 3D printer as the final oh, uh, coup d'etat, yeah, final, final end of the thing. So this is where they're headed. Bill Gates has stated the quiet part out loud, no one in the Western world should be eating actual animal beef anymore. That's his yeah. stated goal. And guess what? As America's number one largest farmland owner, according to NBC News, he's got a lot of sway in agricultural yeah. policy. Yeah. It's crazy. That was an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. I'm Ezra Levant. Every weekday I do a monologue about the topic of the day. Then I interview a fascinating guest either in studio or via Skype. And then I read your mail, whether it's fan mail or hate mail, which is sometimes even more interesting. This is on our premium service, though, called Rebel News Plus. Go to rebelnewsplus.com. It's eight bucks a month or less if you buy a whole year in advance. You get my show every weeknight, plus Sheila Gunn Reed's show every week. It's called The Gun Show. It's pretty amazing. You know, we rely on you because we do not take a dime from the government. In Canada, that makes us almost unique. So please help us out and help yourself to some great journalism at rebelnewsplus.com.